welcome to today's soulful conversation with Sujata aunty it's always so encouraging to learn something new from her and today's topic is new yet very packedful because all of us tend to equate tantrums just to children when it comes to actually adults we feel that sorry adults cannot throw tantrums they cannot be judgmental they cannot be in a gush of emotions but i think there's where we need to actually revise our thoughts put a full stop and awaken ourselves good evening namaste welcome 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 well thank you so much for joining in and today's topic is of course very very intriguing when i heard this word adult tantrums it was a little okay it sounds it sounds like something we can talk about so here we are and i would love for you also to share and you know just um, express what you feel i also have a little meditation which i have thought that uh, we'll do in the end uh, you know just to let us know that when anger arises or when this feeling of wanting to go into a tantrum arises then we can uh, just connect our thoughts and breath together and do that most of us associate tantrums with the uh, toddlers you know it's like when you when children become 2 years old it's called the tantrumy twos and of course as they grow we very soon feel that uh, okay now they're teenagers so they are okay to throw tantrums uh, because that's a different age where children you know start having their own thoughts and they're stepping out into the world so there's a lot of peer pressure etc cetera, etc cetera, and they open themselves to throwing tantrums and uh, of course um now what we feel or what i see as i was just reflecting on this topic was that i feel that most of us know people around who suddenly throw a tantrum and sometimes even we've gone through that where we've just lost our cool and you know we've thrown tantrums in a way where we've lost ourselves maybe just banged uh, against something and a lot of this we see on the roads isn't it we see a lot of this road rage actually adult tantrums are something like you know more intense than i would say the uh, the tantrums of toddlers and um, it all comes it all comes from a space where you're not able to handle your emotions so whether you're a toddler or you're an adult emotions are going to arise in everybody and when you really don't know how to address those emotions or how to handle those emotions you just lose yourself isn't it you just lose yourself what happens and why we allow the toddlers and you know we don't take it so seriously is because the toddlers really don't have enough words or understanding of their emotions to express them whereas it's supposed to be that now you're an adult adult and you have all the necessary knowledge the wisdom the understanding to express your emotions so you're not meant to throw a tantrum but i'm sure we all have people in our homes or somewhere someone close to us where we've seen people throwing tantrums you know even that sudden gush of hormones or uh, that comes into us when somebody just takes a turn in a wrong way or tries to overtake your car and you feel okay i'm going to show it to this person and you press on the accelerator and you you know you feel that you have to suddenly whiz past the other person and then you know blow your horn or shout out or abuse all these are tantrums isn't it or suddenly in your homes you might just feel you know there's someone who st- suddenly out of the blue starts on some kind of a um tantrumy argument or a fight mostly it comes from the space where you're not heard or you feel you're not heard and that's where we you know suddenly get into this uh rage and we lose ourselves and i was just uh, watching or reading a few things before this session and it's very very toxic and it's very very threatening i was i was listening to some talk and some conversation where i was that was of course on a different topic and a lot of uh, psychologists or psychiatrists nowadays call this as ied which is intermi- intermittent explosive disorder where you're absolutely fine there's nothing that you're feeling sort of troubled about or you know your behavior is normal and suddenly something comes up or something happens and mostly when you hear a no 
mostly when you hear a no to something and you just explode and the anger is not that you just shout you abuse you hit yourself it's like total self sabotage you can bang the door you are even ready to kill somebody in that in that moment you threaten people you 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 know you and actually you can do anything in that moment and the parents or people around them really feel scared because the person is not in their full senses at that time they just lose themselves totally lose themselves and after some time they just settle down absolutely peaceful not that the what they wanted to do has been given to them or they are totally pacified that may not happen but just at that moment because there is a resistance because there is a no to something that they wanted it uh, leads them into this you know this shouting screaming or whatever uh, behavioral disorder that comes up comes across as a tantrum but at that time when the person is going through a tantrum an adult the kind of energy the kind of force not just verbally but even physically that comes into them due to the rush of hormones is really really very strong and if you don't control if the person is not able to control themselves it can be very very threatening to themselves as well as to the people around them isn't it i, I don't know if any of you have experienced this with people around you or have seen this or even felt that yourself sometimes so what is the best way what is the best way to handle it or what i understand or what i um, you know what i know about is that when people get into this kind of a phase when they are not comfortable or they are in a, you know in a phase where they can't handle the situation there are two things that they usually go through and it's called either like they become like a hurricane or they become like a tortoise so there are two kinds of reactions that's how they they've been named so we all understand what is a hurricane you know it's like a eruption of something inside like a volcanic eruption and you just don't know where you are just throwing yourself you're throwing things you're breaking things you're hitting against you know the wall breaking the phone hitting the screen of the computer anything anything and i've seen this i've heard this i know for sure that this is something that happens the other thing that we call as a toto is is that a lot of times people just withdraw they just withdraw because again they are not able to handle what is happening isn't it so they go into a shell like a tortoise they go into a shell but that does not mean that they have processed what they are feeling that does not mean that they have totally you know they have totally been able to handle what they are feeling they just go into the shell and once they go into the shell um, they are like just with that pain body with that emotion and they don't really process it fully so sometimes it is even said that it's better to just express it out and let it go um but of course it has to be within within certain norms isn't it any reflections any thoughts any sharing here i would love to hear from you is it making sense uh, i mean let's let's some kind of yeah manisha i think we lost her connectivity and actually it is through these moments it is in these moments that we've seen a lot of people who you know who create big crimes they hit out they even kill people they even hurt themselves they jump into you know self sabotage and self destructive activities for themselves lot of us lot of this happens all around yeah manisha are you there yes yes uh, am i audible now yes yes clearly okay uh, no what i was saying that what uh, like what you said even i have seen uh, you know these kind of people but i have also seen that sometimes you know because of these tantrums the situation also change you know it it, it sometimes it uh, it improves also you know like uh, if if uh, somebody is saying no to you and you know you start throwing tantrums and then what happens that maybe because of fear or maybe because of any other reason the situation changes and you are hurt mm -hmm. so then in that case you know like because you are hurt so you tend to do it you know again also because you feel that this is the uh, maybe the best way uh, to do it 
Yeah, so it's anything. It's like a child who's throwing a tantrum for a chocolate or an ice cream and you give in to the child. The child starts using it as a way of, uh, you know, getting what they want. It's the same way as an adult. If, if you're, you know, if, if there's something that you're asking for, and it, it could not just be in a relationship. It could even be like, you know, a grown-up uh, person who wants something and uh, is not heard. And then he shouts and screams. And because the other person is fearful or people around them feel, okay, I just give it to him. It's not a very healthy way of being, isn't it? It's not, uh, they, you may be heard. But it's not a very healthy way of being because you've not really dealt with it. That is just like a tantrum in a way where, um, yeah, you may be heard and you're, you know, for that moment, you may be pacified. But the fact what we're reflecting on is not just the behavior. We're also reflecting on what happens inside you that brings you to that stage of needing to throw a tantrum or to come into that, you know, that space of uh, that kind of behavior which is surely not acceptable you know you may be heard and you may be throwing the tantrum again and again just to get what you want but that's not something that will last that's not something which is healthy isn't it that's not a way of uh, getting out of that's i would say that's just like a escape mechanism or as nitika writes a defense mechanism on either sides for those who are giving in as well as for those who are uh, throwing the tantrum isn't it uh, does that make sense, Manisha? Yes. What you're right? saying, making like, sense. Yes. Always, always link it. Like, you know, what I was thinking was that tantrums we usually associate with children. When do children throw tantrums? We've seen them, you know, suddenly they'll fall off on the floor. They'll start hitting out. They'll throw their toys. They'll bang against something. Isn't it? That's what we usually associate or call or identify a tantrum with. The child just refuses to listen. And let me tell you, even for children, when they throw tantrums, you may give in once or twice. But if as a vigilant parent, as a, somebody who's, uh, you know, when you look into or speak about parenting, you're not going to give in to the child's behaviors again and again. Yeah, sometimes you may be caught up in a lot of office work and, you know, you just want to get over with the whole thing and you don't have time to uh, handle the child. So you will just give in. And children are very smart. They also understand. And it's the same way with adults. It's the same psychology. It's the same way uh, or thought process of adults. But what happens is that every time if you start pacifying or you start giving in to the child's or the adult's tantrums, um, they're not going to learn about it. They are just going to feel that this is the way that I'm going to get my things or get my way, isn't it? And that's exactly what you're saying. So yes, to escape the situation or to you know just get over with it and move on, you will definitely give in. But can that will that last? Or is it healthy? It's not healthy. The child will not understand. Last two times when I threw the tantrum, my mom just gave me what I wanted. And now she's just not giving. So the tantrum will be, I uh, sort of, tantrum will be more. The child didn't know that the last two times you were caught up or you had to run into a meeting on Zoom or something. So you just pacified the child. Child is not understanding all this. It's just that, yeah, when I throw a tantrum, when I cry, when I shout, when I throw things around, immediately just to cool down the situation, I get my chocolate or I get an ice cream or whatever it is that I'm asking for. And then you realize that, yeah, every time I can't give in to the child's needs, every time I can't, you know, every time he starts shouting. And that's how when they're not taught at that young age to deal with those tantrums, to deal with the emotion that they are feeling. Or to be understanding that every time they can't get a yes, there are a lot of times when you may need to hear a no also in life. They grow up to not being able to listen to that no as adults also. They want their way. When would you throw a tantrum? You'd only throw a tantrum or get angry when you want things to go your way. Isn't it? So just falling into that or allowing it to happen and get your way or get your peace of mind for that Little time is really creating a big behavioral disorder, I would say. You know, and suddenly you don't even realize the things change, the demands change as you grow. But the you know the inner inner psychology, in a way, if I may say, remains the same. That I can't hear a no. If I hear a no, I need to just shout and scream or throw things around, and then I will be heard and I will get what I want. But that's not really the way to be. Once in a while or something, we all throw tantrums, don't we? But not, um, not on a regular basis or not all the time to fall into that. Because that really is that there is some kind of a mental illness within you. 
or a lot of times people throw tantrums when they are under the influence of alcohol or you know they're not getting what they want drugs and all that that all we understand but i'm just talking in a normal way in a normal household it's not a very healthy way to give in to those isn't it yeah manisha <laughs> with you definitely that is not the way mm. and a lot of times we see that you know these adults who create tantrums or children in um, in homes where children are told not to throw tantrums we see that the ad adults are like shouting screaming yelling all the time whether it is towards a maid or whether it is towards a child or whether it is towards your staff or your partner you know it's not a very respectful way of being and then a young child or a small child will understand yeah this is the way to speak to uh, you know this person like you have to speak speak to the staff you have to shout at them you have to get your way through in this way so you cannot you're not in a position to correct the child and say that you don't throw a tantrum if the adults in the house are not aware of their behavior with you know with others yeah yeah, Sushti Tanvi, you have a question or do you want to share something? Aunty, we have a question. Um, in the process when the other person is throwing tantrums, it's the other party who gets affected. So how the other person should respond to it, whether they should uh, be uh, seclude themselves or should they keep their voice? Uh, could you throw light on that? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So see, when you say that uh, what the best way, like I always say that the best way to handle it is at that moment, one cannot handle. It's always like if there's shouting happening from this side and you are also shouting, then there's no difference. You're also throwing a tantrum and the other person is also throwing a tantrum. So if you are, you know, more matured or more understanding and in that space where you see that at this moment, I'm not going to be heard. Actually, when someone is shouting, they're just trying, they're thinking that if I shout, uh, then they will be, um, you know, there will be, the, the thing will get uh, okay, but that doesn't really happen. That doesn't, that's not how it's meant to be. You will not be heard. So you have to understand that at that moment, yes, either you need to withdraw or you need to be silent and just, you know, hold on at that space. Uh, I would say that just step away, just step away. Don't be in the person's energy around if you can but sometimes these people who are throwing a tantrum get so aggressive and volatile they could break anything and you know it's it's not very healthy at that time but if it is a manageable situation i would say yeah step back be a little silent don't don't fall into the uh, into the same trap again and then let's see how, what happens at a later point when the person is more settled and mellowed down then definitely speak to the person and they will also say they will also understand that something came over them and they just don't know what happened at that time and they lost their cool. So what has to be developed is a regular sense of practice where one can think, one can reflect, one can learn to take that little pause. You know, one can take that little pause before responding. And what comes to me is something which I call as like, suddenly when I feel also sometimes, you know, emotions come up or what one should ideally be going into is firstly just stop for a moment just stop just take a pause and just stop for that moment and just drop what is creating this just drop what is creating this uh, thought this feeling this emotion within you try to drop it and then just breathe breath is the best and the simplest way of coming into a neutral space and not allowing this to overpower you isn't it Breath is one of the simplest, simplest ways of coming back to the current, present moment. And actually, you'll realize that in every time when you think of it, your tantrum or somebody who's throwing a tantrum, they are just full of anger. And like you said, Trishti, that the other person is affected. The other person will only be affected when they are not centered. You know, when they are also, there's some pain body that has come up in them also. Otherwise, they know that this is a time when the other person is not to be sort of engaged with. Isn't it? So best to just leave it. But what happens is our, 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 the person who's throwing a tantrum is definitely coming from a strong ego space. And so the person uh, who's being affected, if their ego also suddenly becomes very big, then it's of course like a full-on war. 
But if the other person just says, okay, let, let this moment settle down. Let me just, you know, be silent and not get caught in my ego mind. Then you'll see that the other person will also become quiet because you can't be, it's not possible to, for one person to go on shouting and the other person just not responding. In fact, that makes the, the person who's getting angry even angrier, isn't it? It's like they're beating the head on the, on the wall. Right, right. Thank you, Auntie, for answering. So the best way is definitely to withdraw, to move off that thing, to step away, breathe, and, uh, you know, just understand that the person who's throwing a tantrum is also someone who's close to you, is a loved one. It's not somebody who's like, I mean, of course, there could be people on the street and here, there throwing tantrums. But ideally, when you're dealing with it with somebody in the house, it's a situation where obviously they've lost their cool at this moment. But you cannot afford to do the same. You need to stop, take a pause, breathe, connect, and then let that moment pass away. Just understand that the biggest thing in this is that it's all something that is happening temporarily and it is passing away. If it becomes a habit, if it is happening too often, then definitely you need to reflect because there is some kind of a, you know, mental illness or mental imbalance that the person is getting into. And that also can be treated by counseling, by, you know, general healing. There could be some little mild medication that could be needed to release the anxiety but the person is basically coming from a fearful situation isn't it even if you say a no to somebody what happens is that you feel now whatever I'm saying is not being heard you know whatever I'm saying so I won't get what I want it's some kind of a fear it's some kind of a fear that comes up that creates this so one just needs to hold on at that time and just let that moment pass away and very soon you'll be able to deal speak with that but what is the biggest what is a bigger point that i wanted to bring across here is that if we want to discipline young ones in our home or children or even younger toddlers we have to be very aware of our own adult tantrums as parents we are not justified to shout and yell and you know all the time complain that's like throwing a tantrum isn't it and then expecting the children not to do that so always, always turn within you, within yourself and see that, am I throwing tantrums? Am I complaining all the time? Am I like, you know, uh, getting caught in thinking that, oh, I have to shout and I have to scream and I have to get my way through. And some of us may do it in a milder way. Some of us may do it in a very aggressive way, but then it all comes from the same thing of feeling not heard or there's some kind of a threat inside you. There's a fear inside you. That's why you're throwing that tantrum isn't it? So always reflect on what is happening within you, what is making you feel that. Obviously, the person who's shouting is fearful, is angry, the person is full of only anger and rage and resentment and it's just coming out at the moment due to the situation or whatever is happening, you know, right there at that moment. So that's what you need to think about, that's what you need to reflect on and just take that little pause and you'll see that that whole wave of emotion that is coming up, which seems to be totally consuming you, will just pass away. Will just pass away. And the more we incorporate all these things in our, in our daily practices, whether it's meditation or just taking the pause, remembering that it's all passing, you know, like Sushti was just saying before the session, take those three breaths of awareness just to bring yourself into the present you will see that it will become a part of you. It will become a part of your being. When you're in the midst of that tantrum or that anger outburst, whatever you might say, it's very difficult for you to come into awareness to take that pause. Unless you're really somebody who's very aware, then of course you will not go into a tantrum only. But when you're in the midst of that in a thunderstorm, you cannot, it, it's, it's very rare that you will remember to take that pause. So just learn to make that a habit within you and even reflect, even reflect that is it really worth carrying this? Is it really worth holding on to? Because all this anger is only harming us, isn't it? It's really burning us from inside. Isn't it? Is it really worth holding on to? And sometimes like, you know, when we are even uh, later on reflecting on our own behavior, 
that we lost our self or we behaved in a way which was very tantrumy, um, it doesn't make us feel good about ourselves, isn't it? So what can we do? We can inculcate this habit of not, not suddenly responding or projecting that what is happening is like very threatening to me and so you fall into this trap. Yes, Arjun? Yes, I can't talk much because of my throat, but um, <laughs> one technique that you've taught us that I've always found very powerful and useful is the uh, Donglin breath. But if someone yep. else is upset, I found that yep. helps calm me down immediately because it brings me to a space of not blaming the other person and empathizing. Yeah, absolutely. That's a wonderful way. And maybe in one of the sessions, we can always repeat that. It's been a while since we've done that. So maybe, you know, uh, because next week also the topic that I have in mind, I don't know what will come up till next week. There's another quote that I read, which said, um, uh, raise your words, not your voice, you know, raise your words, not your voice. And I can't uh, un remember the second line because it says that uh, the, you know, what, what helps the plants to grow is rain and not thunder. So this is in continuation to that. And maybe definitely next time we can incorporate a little meditation with the Tonglin breath. But again, you have to be in that awareness right at that time. To come into that point, whether it's forgiveness, whether it's, you know, breathing, that's also a way of breathing, being fully present with the breath. So, yeah, thank you for that reminder. It's These things are very, very useful. But what is important to understand is that make these a part of your way of being every day, not when you are in the midst of the uh, argument or the fight. Just in your general day, whatever you're doing, just be in that awareness. Just fall into that. Just drop whatever your mind is saying. And um, a lot of this comes up because you're, you know, you're going through a lot in your mind. Yes, yeah, Swishti, you can. Thank you. Yeah, so make these a part of your daily practice that you know you take a pause before speaking you uh, don't jump into conclusions yeah i just remembered what i was mentioning was that if something happens if there's an argument or something that is going on we usually carry that in our mind you know we keep narrating it repeating it like like we say you know chewing the whole card it keeps going on in our in our mind and we are repeating and narrating the same thing so that's when, you know, you confront the situation or you confront the person. Suddenly everything just bursts up and comes out, isn't it? So we have to make it a habit that we, we take that little pause before we reflect. Because it's not really worth carrying, isn't it? It's not really worth carrying with us and disturbing our peace of mind. That's something which I truly believe now that we can't afford to hold on to these things and they are just not worth holding on to. Only yesterday or day before, I think we were in a, in a Sangha meeting and we were discussing that um, if today I'm caught in a, in a very fearful situation or with a thought or with something which is really, really sort of consuming me, uh, all I need to do is to reflect that there's so many times that these things come up. But do I remember what happened yesterday with the same thought or with something which was as fearful or as consuming? It just passed away, isn't it? And so will this moment. So will this very present moment. So you don't need to be fearful or get caught in that at all. Only thing is to be in the present at that moment and you will see that it will pass away. Very, very easily it will pass away. Nothing can, um, nothing can, nothing can make you you know, your own fears, your own projections, your own thoughts, that's the only thing that can consume you. The situation, the moment, the, the whole issue will definitely pass away. But at that time, that emotion feels so big. Isn't it? And that's where we lose our awareness. That's where we get caught in the whole emotion and we get carried away. Any reflections? Uh, Sujata, I want to ask one question here. Yeah. That, uh, when we are 
trapped in these you know kind of circle of thoughts and emotion that time even at that time we are aware that you know what we what is happening uh, within us is not right but then we try to come out of it but then again uh, you know it is temporary again we go back into the same process and get entangled in that continuous chain of thoughts so what is the best way even after you know being aware of about it we can't help ourselves we are not able to come out of it so i really want to understand that at that time when it is happening when you are entangled at that time how to come out of it what is the best way so i don't believe that we are helpless if we are aware if we are in that awareness then it will not uh, you know i feel that yes we see whatever happens even if it is that this is the way that one starts to respond it has only started happening because it has become a habit now isn't it it's become a habit or there's some kind of a pattern that you're carrying maybe from the past or from childhood so one starts to respond in that way or life at this moment is very tough things are not going your way and you know you're very frustrated actually it comes from a deep sense of frustration isn't it and again it is totally from the ego mind you know when you see certain things that happen in happen on the roads this road rage you can totally understand that it comes from the ego mind always i always associate adult tantrums with how people argue fight uh, you know in the middle of the road just because someone has made a mistake or someone has just passed whizzed past them and over speeded or whatever so just understand that at that moment obviously this this way of reacting has come from something which has hit your ego inside isn't it so that's why it becomes very very big and you lose your cool so what your question is what do you do at that time it's again something that has built up as a habit through through your life isn't it so to erase that also you need to make something which is a better higher or you know uh, something which is a better way of responding or a better habit isn't it so what is it that you need to do at that time what is it that you really need to do you need to if you are in awareness the least that you can do is to just stop where you are but your ego will not let you stop at all your ego will just not let you stop at all it will definitely poke you from here poke you from there telling you that you are right and the other person is wrong and you need to just give it back to the other person right away in the you know in the best way that you can and of course that best way is not really a best way if i may say so you have to inculcate this as a practice like i said learn to take the pause connect to your breath come back into the moment and you will see that you will be able to ease away the situation much better but that too has to become a habit it can't happen at that time and that's why through the day every few you know every hour or so wait take a pause build up that thing within you so that you don't keep falling into that just take that pause at that moment and don't keep falling into that but you have to inculcate that too and make it a habit isn't it and it takes a while to get uh, you know to get confirmed in your way of being otherwise that's not how it is how it will be so yeah. make that a habit that suddenly something is feeling like i have to give it back to this person just take a pause it's not necessary you will not be hurt but your ego only gets satisfied if you you know shout it out or scream or at that moment take it in a do it in a negative way and if you reflect on it is it really worth because what happens when you do that you lose your cool that's not you you don't like it to be that way isn't it you don't like it to be that way yes that's true right so just be a little if you are in awareness it will not take over the moment you are in awareness you separate it the moment you've come into that awareness that i'm my behavior is something which is not uh, okay you've lost that uh, you've disconnected from the whole argument or the whole you know the whatever is consuming you the moment you come into awareness okay. thank you sujata thank you very much yeah would you all like to do a little 10 minute meditation yes definitely yes, okay okay let's sit back let's make ourselves comfortable <laughs>
Please mute yourselves. Okay, just settle down. And let's bring into our awareness something that always makes you angry or a person or some situation that entangles you and you just lose. You know that it, it's something which happens frequently. Bring that into your awareness. Settle down in your spaces. Let's work on really decluttering all that that fills up our mind. Whenever we get angry or we throw a tantrum, it's because we are really cluttered in the mind. There are a lot of thoughts that are coming up. We are cluttered. So make yourselves comfortable. Gently close your eyes and take a few deep breaths, big deep breaths right up to the solar plexus, down to the sacral, below your navel, because that's the emotional center from where all our emotions arise. The deep churning that you feel in your Swadhishthan, breathe into it. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Gently focusing from the chatter outside to the stillness inside. If there's something that you're say upset or angry about right now, think about it. Bring in that emotion, that sensation, which suddenly wants you to burst out. Something that happened to you, something that happened in the world. Just bring up that thought, that feeling, that emotion. And even before we go into a deeper meditation, just ask yourself, how useful is it for me to stay with this? How useful is it for you to stay with this anger? To, to stay with this emotion. Ask yourself, do you really need to be upset and angry about it? Also understand that it's impossible to stay angry or upset for a very long time. When we actually begin to ignore that issue, or we stop having a conversation in our head about it, letting go begins to happen. We begin to let go of that feeling. Just keep this thought in your mind. Just fully be with your breath. Be aware of your posture. Be aware of your feet. If they're on the floor or you're sitting cross-legged, be aware of your arms and your hands and your lap. And just bring your attention to the physical sensation that this situation, this person, this issue brings in your body. Feel that sensation fully in your body. Feeling that sensation and connecting to your breath. 
paying attention to each breath as it passes. And actually taking your breath to that sensation. So if you're feeling a churning in your stomach, a heaviness in your chest, a palpitation in your forehead, or anything in your spine, a tingling or a shivering in your calves. All of us have different sensations when we think of the person or an issue that really, really troubles us. Just breathe into that sensation. You're not forcing your breath here. Just placing your focus on your natural breathing and directing the breath to that part of the body. Just notice this more in your chest or in your stomach. Taking the breath there and gently leaving your attention there. Feeling the breath rising and falling. You may notice suddenly that your mind is wandering away. And there's some thoughts that have come up and you're trying to follow those thoughts about the angry situation, about the anger that you're feeling. Understand that this is only a thought. Gently bring your awareness from the mind chatter, from the thought to your breath or to the sensation. And that brings you totally into the present. Whenever the mind feels scattered or distracted, Gently shift your awareness, shift your thought back to your breath. Feel the breath as it moves in and out at the tip of your nostrils. Breathing in one. Breathing out two. Breathing in three. Breathing out four. Breathing in five. Breathing out six. Breathing in seven. Breathing out eight. Breathing in nine. And breathing out 10. Again, you may notice that the mind has wandered. Maybe just to something that needs to be done today or tomorrow. Or something that happened in the past. Gently turn your attention and return to the breath. Don't judge it. Just notice that you've been distracted and you come back to counting all over again. Continuing to keep your awareness on your breath. Counting each in-breath and out-breath. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out. If you're finding that emotions are coming up and they're overwhelming, 
and that overwhelm is distracting you from paying attention to your breath. Shift your awareness to the sensation that that emotion is creating in your body. Just pay attention or experience that anger fully. Don't judge it. Just allow yourself to follow your thoughts about this emotion and just see the anger passing through you. And the moment you begin to engage in that anger, notice what happens. When you begin to show interest in this feeling, see what begins to happen. Just allow yourself to do or engage in this for the moment. And then gently with awareness, return to your breath. The sensation is definitely lesser. The emotion is definitely lesser. And if it is not for you, it's absolutely okay. Don't judge yourself. Let the emotion come up fully. Let the sensation come up fully and just let it pass away. You stay connected to your breath. Don't force anything. Just don't force anything. Before we end, just release all your focus now. Just let loose. Allow your mind to do what it wants. Just let your mind do what it wants. Gently returning your focus back to your body. Stretching your toes, feeling your fingers, coming fully, fully back. into your own body, into your own awareness. Take a moment to think about the issue. Is it really so big? Does it really need to disturb your peace of mind? Or is it something that you need to reflect on? Yes, if you need to act on it, speak to the person, whatever might be needed. But from the space of stillness. So to answer to many of you who asked me through the session, what is it that we should do? Just connect to your breath. Hold on for that very moment and know that this is just passing away. And it is totally in your hands. You have the power to allow yourself to feel that anger, to feel that rage, to throw that tantrum for as long as you wish to. The moment you are aware of it, the moment you understand that it is only consuming you and harming you, move into that space of awareness and just let it pass away. Know that you have the power to come back to your breath anytime. Anytime you can come back to your breath, come back into the present moment and release that emotion or that anger or that tantrum at that time. And then address it at a later point. You won't need to address it. So 
So being in gratitude to this breath, which always helps you to come back to your center, to the space of stillness within you. Taking a deep breath of gratitude. Bringing your awareness into the present, slowly and gently. You may open your eyes. See the moment you come into the present with your breath, it brings a smile into your entire body. That's the simplest way of coming out of a tantrum. Just tell yourself, let me smile. And you see that everything dissolves in your body. So bring a nice joyous smile to your face, seeing that smile coming up from every cell of your body. And slowly and gently, you may open your eyes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's switch on our screens and smile at each other, knowing that these tantrums are just something which are not worth it. It was thank really you. very informative. Thank you. 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 Thank you.